kind of get the results of this. I'm going to give you all some do's and don'ts of grouping. And then we're going to find out the results. So, all right. Did y'all enjoy that? Y'all were like into that. I'm scared if you don't get it right that I'm going to get a lot of arguments about this, but we'll see how you do. All right, so go ahead and look, and we're going to walk through these groups, and I'm going to talk about them. But if you look at it and you check yours and you find out you got it correct, let me know immediately, and I'll check your sheet. Well, it's just going to do a lot of work, though. I mean, 
hate to say it, but that's how it is. Um, and then you have the innovator, random actor, cautious innovator. And I wouldn't necessarily put two cautious innovators with a random actor, um, but if they have the innovator with them, this group is going to work okay. It's just not going to be that efficient. The innovator will come up with the idea. The cautious innovator is going to think through it from 10 different directions. And the random actor is just going to be having fun and enjoying it. Um, but it may take them a little bit longer to complete the assignment, but you're not going to have any problems out of your random actors in these two groups. Which, for me, if I have more than one, it makes it very difficult to group. So then you're looking at your manager or loyalist manager. You definitely do not want three managers in a group, but two of them can work together pretty well. Um, the loyalist, again, is going to be doing a lot of the work, but the managers will work with them as well, better than they will a lot of the other groups. Um, and then manager with two loyalists, they're going to get it done quick. Manager's going to tell them what to do. They're going to do it. But I'll say the most efficient groups out of all of these are two and three. Because the innovator comes up with the idea, the manager thinks of how they're going to do it, loyalist gets to work on it. So think about that in your grouping. Okay? I'm going to give you a couple of do's and don'ts. Do not put managers with random actors. That's just number one. That's a safety issue. You're actually putting that, man, that student at risk at some point, potentially. Um, and if you can, avoid putting random actors with loyalists because loyalists are gullible. They're going to go along with what, you know, they can kind of get sucked into whatever's happening, kind of like that cult follower that we showed you. So those are the biggest keys, is those two issues. And the other, and honestly, it's opposites a lot don't always work that great together. Um, now, a loyalist can work well with an innovator, but they have, the man they have to have the manager that equals them out. Does that make sense? So if you're looking at it. And the other thing with grouping is you don't want to do this immediately. Don't go to school the first day of school and go home and have to okay, I'm going to practice this behavioral profiling grouping and profile all your kids after one day. Like, honestly, this is probably a month and a half into the school year. You're going to have a very good clue of who's who in your class. And then you're going to start being able to place them in groups that they're going to feel very comfortable in. Okay. Um, your loyalists, uh, if they're just the two innovators, they're going to be so frustrated because the innovators are going to be coming up with all kinds of ideas and everything, but not following through on anything. And they are going to be doing a ton of the work, but it's going to be very disorganized and not managed. So loyalists with managers, always a good idea. Um, you can have an innovator, but you've got to have a manager or the loyalist will hate that day. They will not be having a great time in your class that day. That's how, that's how that that works. And I can give you all more information on this as well at some point. Last couple points I'm going to make. The, the biggest thing that I see is competent decision making. And, and Natasha kind of um, hinted on this this morning when she was talking about giving them choices that you are okay with. Um, and she used like, do you want a blue color or a red color or something like that? Um, you know, I'm talking more of um, one of the things that I've seen some people do is um, come up with two different assignments. You know, kind of like what we showed you um, with that dust bowl and that zombie apocalypse. She still got that dust bowl stuff. She could actually say you have the option you can either do the dust bowl assignment or the zombie apocalypse. You will actually still have students that will pick the dust bowl. Some of them don't want to think about a zombie apocalypse. They'd rather think about a dust bowl, number one, or they're just very conventional and they don't want the crazy assignment. You know, they just want to look up the dust bowl, give you the information, fill it out. So if you have done assignments and you want to do it differently, actually offer both options to the kids. So your random actors are going to love this because they get to have a say over what their assignment's going to be. They're going to pick the zombie apocalypse one every single day, and so are the innovators. But your loyalists, your managers, they may pick the dust bowl because it may be easier for your loyalists. They may be able to find a lot of actual information on dust bowls, what they can do. They'll get it done more efficiently and be done with it. Does this make sense? So if we can give them decisions that you're okay with. You can either do this assignment or this assignment. Okay, we're working on shapes. You can either, here's some shapes, put them together, or draw a picture of a house with these shapes. Like that's just a real basic thing. Like that's probably not something you might teach, but 
it's just the conventional people are gonna just draw the house with the shades, or unconventional people are going to want to make something with the shades. So they have to be time compacted. One of the biggest struggles for random actors is they a lot of times have had parents that make all their decisions for them, to the point of they get to make very few decisions on their own. The first random actor that I ever worked with um, was from another country, and his parents had informed him that they had purchased his bride, and he was going to go back to his home country and meet his bride. This kid had had every decision made for him his entire life to the point of now they're choosing his wife. And he's just crying. It's like, why are you dating anymore? He's like, I can't even have a girlfriend because now I already have a wife chosen for me. And I asked him one question, scale of one to five, how fearful are you? And he started breaking down and he started crying. He said, five. He said, would you like me to help you to feel more confident and feel good? So I started giving decisions, small decisions. There was another young man that I met, and I recognized him as a random actor, and he's sitting there, and thankfully a teacher noticed something's not right, and they brought him to me. And I get to talking with him, and I said, on a scale of one to five, how fearful are you? And he said, five. I said, okay. You want me to help you learn to be more confident and teach you? Yes. So we started working with, we had a friend, and he had this friend that he looked up to as an innovator. And every time he got into a situation where he got in trouble with the teacher at home, I would say, you know, what do you think your friend Johnny would have done? Well, he probably would have done this. Okay, next time you get in that situation, do you think you can try that? Yeah, I think I can try it. And then after a while, he started doing it. So instead of saying, well, what would Johnny do in that situation? I started saying, well, what would new confident you do? This is you now, this isn't Johnny, this is what you do. And they had this weird moment, one of my most powerful moments I've ever had in a counseling session. He comes in, and y'all remember like maybe 10 years ago, these We Want Movies, or We Love Movies bracelets that were going on? Do you remember that? He had this bracelet on, it was for breast cancer awareness. But why do you think all the boys at school were wearing these bracelets? Because it said movies, right? So he has this bracelet on. And he comes in, and I'm like, hey, we just talked to him. He's doing much better. He's not getting in trouble at school as much. He's really grown. And I was like, hey, and I knew what it was. I was like, hey, what's that bracelet? I've seen those around. And I acted dumb, you know. And he's like, and he goes, oh, man. <laughs> what is it? Like, uh, it says, we love boobies. And I'm like, <laughs> I was like, well, you act like you're kind of upset about this, or you don't feel right about it. What's the deal? And he was like, yeah, it's supposed to be for breast cancer awareness, but all the guys are just wearing it because it says boobies. I was like, but you don't feel good about it? He was like, no, not really. My grandmother died of breast cancer, and I just feel like I'm just making fun of it. I was like, okay. So I said, okay, so what would confident you do if that's not what you want to do? What, what's the confident thing to do? And he took the bracelet off, and he started bawling, just sobbing. And he walked over to my trash can and threw it away. And he sat there and cried for a little bit. And it was the coolest moment because it was the first time that he did something confident, didn't care what people thought of him, and really no one knew it. It was just me and him. But it was one of the most powerful moments, and he was off and running. And now that kid is an innovator. You can guide them out of their sense of fear and disgruntledness to the point where they feel good about themselves, they feel good about being in school, and they become confident. And all it takes is knowing what you're looking for and start working with them on, you know, what's the confidence that you do? How can we get you out of this? Um, he can go work for the post office and he's gonna be okay. <laughs> when I initially was trained, I remember thinking of kids that had gone through my counseling office and I remember thinking, God, please don't ever let them go work for the post office because I didn't prepare them for life. I set them up for if they get in a conventional situation with a conventional boss of an extreme manager, they could have a lot of problems. And now when I recognize these kids, I'm growing them out of that. So I'm willing to help with any of this. If you all need me to come do any team meetings or anything like that, um, I've already got some set up with some people to help you with this process. Um, I'm willing to help. But the key is innovative strategies in the classroom, 
Don't serve baked chicken every day. It's okay to serve it a little bit here and there. Um, let's think about how we can make these kids feel better. And the other thing is, um, it's about connection. It's the relationship that heals. It doesn't matter what you do or how you say it, it's the fact that someone's actually saying it and spending the time with the kids. And I think sometimes we get very focused on um, what Natasha said was punitive. And it's like, you know, that kid I was telling you about earlier that isn't recognizing their parents' face, parents aren't sitting there reading with them, not holding them, and then they get at school and they are emotionally dysregulated. They cannot even control their emotions to the point of they're so difficult to deal with and very frustrating as teachers. And if we're using a punitive mindset, that kid blows up, packs a full in class, and you think that kid needs to get what they deserve. They need some hard discipline. And I would fire right back at you and say, maybe they need to get what they deserve when they were babies and people weren't loving on them. Like, we have to connect. And we have to try to find a way to use connection rather than correction. Some kids need a kick in the butt, don't get me wrong. Um, I was one of those at some times in my life. But there's a lot of kids that they're this way because of circumstances that happened before they even had a chance. So part of what we want to teach and part of what I'm working on is finding some ways to teach how to grow school bonding for, uh, for teachers. How you can use that and grow that connectedness in a way that's going to help you in the classroom. It's going to help kids feel good about being here. And more importantly for me, a big passion of mine right now is I want people to feel really good about working. And I want to give you all the support. So that's kind of what Thrive's about. We're not quite, um, we're going to be rolling it out soon. I'm going to be sending out more information on it. Um, but we're coming up with a plan for every campus. So if you have ideas or things that you see or you want to be a part of it, A, email me. Um, we're going to need Hope Squad advisors for every campus. Uh, I'd like to have some contact people for every campus. Um, the other part is if you have ideas or you see things, like for instance, the JKB, We've already identified there is an issue with attachment disorder. So we're coming up with a way to help equip teachers to deal with that issue. There's other schools that have talked to me about trauma. There's other schools that have talked about all kinds of, all kinds of issues. So you let me know what the problem is. Halliburton is here to partner with us to get y'all help. Um, and I know we talk about buy-in, but from what I gather from teachers, everybody's bought in that these kids need help. So let me know what needs to be done, and we're going to try as hard as we can. And it may not be immediate, but we're going to try to figure out ways to help you with it. Okay? So I'm going to let y'all a little bit early, right? I thought I might get some more smiles or something, but it's okay. All right, no gold star for me. <laughs>